Good morning, my Tabor City home here. We're gonna do a little bit of a garden update here. Um, last week's video was about uh, orphans, orphan plants. So I wanted to kind of take you guys and show you what one week means uh, to an orphan plant and how um, taking the chances that we did and showing you the signs that we did exactly how that pans out so last week we uh we procured these uh plants right here we we already had this one but we got all these and if you remember i kept saying look at the base for growth and look at you know what these plants are doing right now so each and every one of them this one's maybe a little bit behind but it's still producing growth up here at the top but each one of these plants is, uh, is doing really well, really well. Um, Hoenium, you know, um, these are looking a little ill. Um, bad roots to begin with. The, the base of these plants is just terrible. I think I'm going to end up having to prop this one with some sticks. I end up propping these ones. I got some, some little tree twigs and, and kind of prop these and if you'll see after propping them now we got brand new flowers coming out of them so I'm probably gonna have to do that with the other ones I don't know what the deal with them was but it's just not uh, <clears throat> excuse me when it took uh, root into the pots it just didn't root really well um, so we'll kind of walk through the garden a little bit and give you guys an idea of um, exactly what we're looking at here so we started out the year with uh back here in may putting down these hostas they were actually back by the house when we moved them up here uh, i have no idea how these caladiums got where they are right now because uh, if you can see we actually put the caladiums down here and so somehow or other we must have walked up that way and dropped some some pieces of some uh roots rhizomes for them and they just took root now evidently i must love this spot here but we started out with planting some caladiums in here. I got different kinds. Um, for the most part, these ones here are the only ones I paid. Um, not only, I, can't, I don't even know that you could say I paid full price for them. Because I actually got them from uh, Sam's Club. So you got like 45 of them, I think, for $12. And then I bought the rest of these ones at uh, Sam's on a discount so the uh the mums here they were left over from last year uh they were we, they were used in a fall display we just put them in the ground over here they were actually little they were a one dollar plant they were they were fairly small uh this year you know they're they're the kind of plant that you're gonna pick up at a at a hardware store or whatever pay six seven bucks for so you know that's pretty good um uh, Petunias, the petunias were actually, uh, they were transplanted. They were on a piece of property that our church owns. And they were getting ready, or they had talked about making a parking lot. I don't know that they're getting ready to. But they had talked about making a parking lot out of this piece of land they bought. Um, and so I asked the, the pastor if we could transplant them. And he said, yeah, go ahead and get them. So went ahead and got them. They have performed great. Actually, there's really, really uh, light purple ones. When you sit on the porch and it's it's the, getting towards the evening, it, you know when they get enough water and they get enough food, they stand up and they just float. And it's actually it's pretty neat to to watch. So, uh, latris, we got a bunch of latris bulbs um, this year. We planted them things. For the most part, they've done really well. Now they were planted late. Um, so I, I can't wait to see what they do next year, but they they did really well. We got the yarrow. Um, this was a like a purple, not a purple, but it was a dark pink yarrow. We got that, uh, and I split the plant. So this is half of what we got, and what we got was like a half gallon container. So you can see how much that's grown. This plant here is thyme, and this plant here is rosemary, and we bought those from a, from a, like a 4-H club, from a, a student farming club, um, 
like an FFA, but it's not an FFA. It's, they take at-risk children, they teach them how to farm in hopes that it will keep them from going astray. So absolutely support that. Went ahead and, and got a couple plants from them. The young man who sold them to me was very knowledgeable about the plants. So, you know, kudos to them for what they're doing here in, in southern North Carolina, uh, southeastern North Carolina. Great program. Uh, these dahlias, this is the first year I've ever tried to grow dahlias. And if you can see the size of that flower, you know, it is a very pale pink flower. Very beautiful, but very large. And I'm, I'm thinking that's one of the dinner plate varieties that I bought. This one here, um, by far, <laughs> you know, look at the color of that flower absolutely spectacular so if you remember the video where we trimmed up camellias and you know we we trim these camellias up at the beginning of the year beginning of the summer and look at all this new growth flushing out on these camellias absolutely fantastic um i was looking at them earlier these are the buds that'll be flowers next spring you know so that we don't have any flower buds on the new growth but that, that should be a much fuller, better shaped plant. I uh, moved a little uh, black-eyed Susan over here that we have on the side of the driveway. But this is another variety of black-eyed Susan. And I actually purchased a bunch of these seeds. They were really cheap. Um, and just spread them out in the garden. And when they when they first start coming up, see how this plant is. And there's, there's, a, there's another one over there. But when it first started coming up, I thought it was weed. And... I probably killed a half a dozen of them things when they were first coming up thinking that they were weeds because <coughs> excuse me when they first came up this is what they look like they just look like this and then after kind of getting uh, used to what kind of weeds grow in this garden bed um, I, I ended up figuring out that that wasn't a weed and said hey you know let's let it grow we'll give it a shot we'll see what happens the 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 most invasive kind of weed i have in this garden bed is this stuff and i have no idea what it is but if you can see these brown spots that come in here i come in here with uh with a weed killer and and zap them so the next thing we have is uh this is a piece of yarrow here that is not the other half to that plan I was showing you earlier. This is actually one I got, um, I know I'm saying actually a lot, that's crazy. This is one I got off the side of the road. Uh, salvia, uh, autumn harvest, I think is what that's named. And it's done a good job. It came as a bare root plant. I had terrible success with bare root plants. I ordered that over in, in the internet and it came as a bare root. I've had very few bare root plants actually produce for me. This is a marigold. I don't know if you guys have seen the video with the uh, marigold original. It's actually, it's so big now it's starting to split in the center. But this is a marigold that we got that was about the size of your thumb. And it has just done a tremendous job producing. So kind of excited about that. I'm hoping it's going to sell seed and we'll have marigold here again next year. Kind of hoping. But, um, let's see. This is uh, some more dahlia here and here. Um, one of the plants that I picked up, I just picked this up yesterday. And it's called obedient plant. And again, it was another orphan. If you can see the brown here on the top. One dollar per plant. These, this plant looked terrible, all wilty. That's why I just cut the top right off of it, trying to give what was there uh, the best chance at some nutrients. And there is growth at the base, but you know, that's two dollars worth of plants. My understanding is they should get about that tall here and be good against this. A uh, neighbor of mine gave me this plant, and we have this plant put several spots here in this yard and everywhere we put it it came as a teeny little plant it has jumped up huge uh, she tells me it's a fall blooming yellow daisy so we'll see uh, pretty interested to see what the flowers on that one looks like echinacea these are some of the different colors of echinacea um, this little fella back here doesn't look like he's enjoying it too much um, but 
we're gonna we're gonna see that one there is an experiment uh, some more of that uh, Rebecca uh, black-eyed Susan right there and just absolute you know, great performing plant um, you know if you had a garden bed full of that you, you would be astounded um, I'm telling uh, black eye or baby's breath here um, first year that these baby's breaths have been in and wait and really waiting to see what it does next year I think uh, you know it's got to get some good root under it before it'll do what it needs to do but excited about that this is actually the other half of that yarrow that we planted and then it's uh, little pieces and sprigs here and there <clears throat> this is probably our tallest liatris and if you can tell you know it's about almost waist tall so pretty good um, some white ginger that our neighbor who gave us the yellow uh, daisy gave us and it has really taken hold I planted it here in between these two trees or between these two camellias because I was afraid that full full sun was gonna be too much for it but I might actually move it to a different location because it, it looks like it really wants a lot of sun. Uh, this was another uh, orphan row here. These are called Mrs. Bradshaw. I picked those up. Pinced them in. I put this in a kind of a shady spot. I also bought another pinstamen as an orphan um, and put it right out here in the middle of the sun. So we're going to see which one of those two. I do that a lot. I actually take a plant. And if I can, I buy two of them. And I put one kind of in a guarded spot and another one in a full sun spot. And I see which one enjoys their life a little bit more. And then I know if I need to move one, where to move it to. These are a smaller dahlia. Um, they really filled out. They were some orphan plants. Um, beyond that, I mean, you know, you look at... I just wanted to show you the difference in these uh, Black Eyed Susans. So, the Black Eyed Susan here, look at the size of the flower head in comparison to my hand for this Black Eyed Susan. And then uh, we'll come over here and look at this Black Eyed Susan. That's more what people expect as a traditional Black Eyed Susan. And then look at the difference in the size of my hand there. So, flower heads on that other one huge um i'll tell you what we'll do this if you guys want some seeds off of the large black eyed susan um hit me up make a comment on this video and uh, i'll pick somebody one of the people who comments on it um and i'll send you some seeds in the mail beautiful plant huge so anyways from my tabor city home to you weekly update and uh god bless we'll see you later Bye.